and welcome to or back to my channel. Today we are finally back with Magfoot customization part two. Thank you guys so much for all the love on part one. You guys, this video took off. I was so happy about it. Speaking of that, if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch that one before this one. Also, if you guys really like technology customization and lifestyle videos all wrapped up into one channel, this channel's for you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I have lots of customization videos for other products coming out within the next month. So yeah, join the fam, hit the red button and it would be amazing. Anyways, it was so fun seeing you guys enjoy part one. I loved seeing you guys using all my tips and using some of my folder icons off my website. And yes, I did make that website just for you guys. We also had some bigger YouTubers and influencers using my graphics too. Okay, before we start, I just wanted to say something really quick. I just kind of want to talk about the difference between inspiration and being inspired and just like plagiarism copying, I guess. So after I posted this MacBook customization, there were other creators that loved the video and wanted to make one themselves, which is amazing. I love it. I'm so happy that I could inspire you guys. So being inspired would be seeing my MacBook customization video and thinking that that's a good idea and that you want to make one. You would go out and find your own tips and make the video your own. There were so many people that I saw that just stole all eight exact tips of mine and then put it in a video of them saying exactly what I had said in my video which that is not being inspired by that is just taking all the work that I did and doing it but you talking instead of me. <laughs> so I'm not saying that it's bad if you guys make MacBook customization videos because it's such a nice trend that I started and it's so exciting but I'm just saying that you should go out and actually do the work and find your own tips. Okay, enough chatting. I spent all day on Tuesday planning out all these tips and searching through my entire MacBook, just trying to find anything that I could customize. So I have a good at least 12 to 13 good tips for you guys, so let's get on into this. Okay, so my first one I have for you guys is sticky note photos. Um, I saw this trick actually from my younger sister who's in middle school. She did this on her school laptop, so thank you Sarah for showing me how to do this. So you can actually put a photo in a sticky note like shown here. Okay, so to do this you would need to put the photo on your laptop by like airdropping however you want to get it there. Then open up a sticky note. If you already have one open and you need to open up another one, click on the one that you already had go to file and then new notes so then you can open up your new one. So first if you try to just drag it over onto the sticky note it's not gonna work it's too big so we have to go and resize it it's super easy all you have to do is click on the photo okay so when it opens up you'll need to either go up here and click it or use your fingers and make it smaller um, so the size that you make it is gonna be the size that it is on the sticky note so I'm gonna put mine about there and then you're gonna do command shift 4 and we're gonna take a screenshot Okay, so now that screenshot should now be the size that you need it, so you're going to just drag that over, and there you go. And there you have it. So, I only have one picture, but you could definitely do more than one if you're wanting to. Um, that's just a different alternative to having pictures on your laptop. Okay, so now at the top, I have this sticky note up here along the top, so when I open it up, it brings up my actual big sticky note, and then I can close it. And that's just up there along the top. So basically all you have to do is, if you ever want to like minimize your sticky note, all you have to do is go up to this top corner and click that button and it makes it into just like small little lines, I guess, if you're wanting it to be like that. But the way I made it stretch across my whole screen is I had it open, then I clicked this little like triangle one, and then I closed it. So then... Now there's two up there. <laughs> so that's how I did that. Okay, and then the last thing that you guys can do with sticky notes is add like a little mini calendar to it. So I did this essentially the same way I did with the actual photo of my boyfriend and I. I just went on to Google, looked up June 2020 calendar. Okay. Um, and then I just went and found one that I liked. So I think it was this one. Saved the image to my desktop. <laughs> We're gonna have to do the thing again where we open it, minimize it to whatever size we want it to be on the sticky note. I just like doing it this way because I can pick and personalize whichever calendar I want and then at the end of June all I have to do is just go find a new one for July and it's super cute. Okay, next I wanted to revisit the customizing the folder icons. Um, I do have a lot more folder icons that I designed on my website for free. You guys can go check those out. It'll be linked in the description. But also if you guys want to actually make your own icons or make an icon out of any picture, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. First before we start this, I had some of you guys asking how to change the um, icon back to the original picture so what you'll do is you'll find the folder that you want to change right click do the get info everything so then you'll go up to this top and click on that and then just click delete and there you have it um, so now if you guys want to make your own icons what you'll do is you'll go 
and I've been using Canva just because their graphics are free and you know I'm not gonna get in trouble with them so what I do is I go into canva.com and I go on to create a design and then I scroll down and I find Instagram post because that's the one that's square sized um, so then it leaves this blank thing right here what you'll do is you can go to elements and just look up anything that you want I like to look up flower just because there's lots of cute ones so we're gonna take this little leaf right here so now you want to drag it as big as you can make it onto the square um, without cutting everything off or making it look weird and then you're going to download that to your computer I'm just gonna drag mine onto my desktop so now it's on your desktop, you're just going to double click on it to open it. You're going to click on this markup tool. You'll find this little wand thing and you'll click on the white background. And it'll do that. It'll cut it all out. And then what you'll do is go up to edit and then cut. So now that takes off all the white background. So now you have a nice little png file so now that you have this you're just going to do the whole command a to select it command c to copy it then go into your folder right click click get info go up to the top one command v and there you have it so you guys can do this with anything off of canva or essentially you can do it with any graphic that you just find online as long as you're using it for personal use obviously just in case just be safe so that's just a super easy way to do it on your own laptop because I know a lot of you guys were having trouble with trying to find a PNG and then it still wasn't actually a PNG and you couldn't get the background to go off so that is how you guys can simply remove the background Okay, this next one is super simple. I know that when I first got my laptop and was setting it up, they made you choose between light and dark mode. And I was so overwhelmed because I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to make this decision now and then want to change it later. And you can change it later. Go to your system preferences and then click general. And then it's right up here. So light mode, dark mode, or there's automatic. Alright, so my next one is kind of similar to changing the folder icons, but instead we're going to be changing the app icons down here. So all you have to do is go and look up so now we're going to save that image to our desktop and then what you'll do is go into finder and go to your applications so we're going to right click get info go up to the top and command B so then there it is so cute um, you can do that with most apps but I know some of the Apple ones don't work so you can pick and choose it really depends what you want to do so this next thing is interesting, like I said, I messed around on my laptop all day and tried to find things to customize and I looked over here and you can actually customize this notification bar widget thing to so go down to edit and then click app store and it comes up with all these cool apps that you can download, some are paid, some are free, um, the ones that I downloaded were called Todoist today I guess, <laughs> and then countdowns, so what I can do is I can go over and add a task, so so now it comes over here onto the side as kind of like a mini to-do list on the side of my laptop that I can just go over and look at. And then another random one that I found was just countdown, so you can make a countdown. Didn't know what to put, so I just put my birthday just as an example. Um, but yeah, those are just some cool things. So this next one is just an app that I got off of the App Store. It's called Be Focused. And this is what it is. So basically, it lets you pick a timer. So like, I had one yesterday that was like, plan my MacBook videos. So then when you start it, you have 25 minutes to do whatever you're wanting and then after those 25 minutes run up, they will give you like a five minute break. So you'll start the five minute break and you can do whatever you want and then it'll set up an alarm and say, all right, time to get back to finishing planning out your MacBook video and then it just keeps going. So I like that because that really keeps me on track, especially with working from home. I don't know, it just helps me personally. Okay, so next I wanted to talk about the dock overall. So you guys, we talked about last time how you can make the dock hidden when you don't want it to be there. Um, but now there's some other things that you can do. So we'll go into dock. So you can change the size. You can make it super small, super big. And then you can change the magnification of like when you hover over the app. So this is what they look like at their largest. So you see what I'm talking about? Put it in the middle, make them like that instead. So, or you can completely turn that off if that's annoying to you. Um, you can change it obviously to the other sides of the screen if you want. Literally if you just play around on this you can find so many new things to do. You can also change the way that your app like falls back into the app if that makes sense. Um, so you can do scale or genie when you minimize an app it goes kind of like a genie in a bottle but if you go to scale and we open it it just I don't know you guys can see the difference. So those are just some of the basic things that you can do. 
So this next one, we're talking about having the date up here at the top. Normally it just comes up with the time instead of the date. Well, obviously you can change between a clock and digital. I like it digital. So to put the date up there, you'll click open date and time preferences. You'll have to click this little unlock button and then type in your password. So you can do a bunch of things. You can make it have the seconds if you want. You can have it make the little dots flash right here. You can do a 24 hour clock. So what I'm talking about with the date is right here. Originally these are like unclicked, but you can have them do that and show the date and the day of the week. So I think that's super nice to have up there. It's obviously a preference thing for you guys if you want to or not. Okay, back to the dock. We're gonna talk about how to remove something from the dock. It's super simple, super easy. Um, it helps it look not as cluttered because sometimes whenever you open an app, it automatically puts it in the dock and then it never goes away. So um, I have this right here. I don't want it to be there. We are going to right click options and then remove from dock. Okay, that looks a lot better to me. It's less busy now. Um, you're gonna have to go in through and quit a couple apps before you close them, but yeah. So I don't know if you guys have noticed by now, but my wallpaper has been changing and rotating through a couple different wallpapers. So I'll show you guys how to do those wallpapers in a minute. But first I'm gonna talk about how to make it change. I really like these designs, but I like to have different things just because I like variation, I don't know. So it's kind of a weird process. So to be able to put a picture as your desktop, you have to add it to your photos first. So when you're in photos, you're going to need to go to your albums and you're going to need to add an album. So what you'll do is you go to your photos. Okay, so we are going to select some of these and then drag them over into video example. So now there they are all are in a photo album. So we're gonna click out of photos and go back to our system preferences. So what you'll do is you will click on the album that we just created. So that it has all these different ones. So then you're going to go down to this bottom and click change picture and you can pick however, whatever you want it to be. I have it as in every minute, but you can do every five minutes, every hour, however long you really want it to be. So that's just how you guys can make it rotate. So if you're like me and you have so many adorable little like screensavers that you want to choose, but you just can't make a decision, you can put them all on there and it'll be perfect. <laughs> So lastly, we're gonna talk about wallpapers. In part one, we made little collages and you guys loved those collages and I showed you guys how you can make your own. So now I have this cute little digital illustration. Um, if you can't tell, this is the actual picture and this is the picture of my boyfriend and I. I would show you guys how exactly to do this in this video, but then that would make this video like four to five minutes long. So I have a whole different video for you guys already posted it on my channel. I'll have it linked below for you guys on how you guys can make these on a phone, a laptop, or a iPad so you can make it on any device. So I give you guys all that information completely for free. You don't have to sign up for anything. It's just a nice little YouTube video on my channel. So your first option is to make a nice little digital illustration of any picture that you have or you guys can make kind of like a cute little line art type of thing. Um, this is one that I made. It's on my website for free if you guys want to grab that and put that on your laptop and then I have matching little icons to match the colors in it. But anyways, you guys can go make your own little line art ones the same way that you would as in that video that I talked about. I think that this is just a nice little more simple way for those of you who said that you thought that the collages were a little too much. So yeah, hopefully these tips help you guys. I really hope that you guys can utilize the whole making your own icons because I think that is so exciting. If you guys want a part three, go ahead and like this video and comment something below about it. I have some more tips up my sleeve. So yeah, also please make sure that you subscribe if this video helped you. I would love to see you here again on my channel again sometime soon. And also turn on those post notifications because I will be putting out a couple other videos on how to customize your other devices. So keep your eyes out for those. Don't forget to follow my Instagram. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys here again on my channel sometime soon.